So this video is about law of signs and how it is as a relationship, a, a ratio, proportions. So we have some angle A, B, and C, and we have their opposite side lengths, little c, little b, little a, and little b. So the big ones are angles. Your A, B, and C are angles. And the little a, b, and c are your side lengths. And we get a nice little relationship here. So that sine of a to its side length, sine of the angle to its side length is also equal to. So if you take the sine of the angle and divide it by its side length, that is the exact same ratio as you will get for the others. They are all proportional. So where does that come from? Well, if we take our basic relationship, we know sine of b would be opposite over hypotenuse. This is our 90. So we get two right triangles going on here. They both share h. We also know that sine of c, right, would be h over b. So if we set these equal, we get this. See, it's a law of signs. You could take a sign for each one. So sine of b over b is the same as sine of c over c. And we could do the same thing if we have it for a as the others. So how do we use this? Well, the first thing you want to do is to fill in a triangle. We already know that interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. So we know that 180 take away 37.5 degrees, take away 28.1 degrees would give us our angle C that we need. So that means C would equal 114.4 degrees. Now we can fill that in. Now on each of these when you're doing law of signs, what it is is a ratio. You're just picking some thing to something. They have to be exactly the same though. And you're comparing it. That's it. So what you need to do first is find the two sides that are given. So we do not know the one that's opposite B, which means we're not going to worry about B. What we have is the one that's opposite C, and we have the one that's opposite A. And so we're going to do sine of A over X and sine of B over C. So the two that are given are X and 17. You just want to find those sides and then find the opposite angle and place it where it needs to be. So 17 would be 114.4 degrees and X would be 37.5. And then now we have our proportion, which we can then solve. So it's going to be cross multiplying and then dividing. So how it looks like is this, we would have 17 sine of 37.5 degrees equals x sine of 114.4 degrees. And then you would divide by whatever's next to the x. Giving us x equals 17 sine of 37.5 degrees over sine of 114.4 degrees. And so as you do more of these, you're going to notice that these two were multiplied and these two are multiplied. So all we really did, if you look at this, is we took the x and the sine of 114.4 and we just switched them. That's it. We took these two and switched them. See, they just switch. So now it's there. And then the 17 gets put with that one. So it's this times this divided by this. It'll be this times this divided by this, the more you practice it. And then now it's just plug it in your calculator. And so our X here is 11.36. And so since we only have one decimal on the others, we'll keep one decimal here, 11.4. That's it. So what does X equal? 11.4. So if you're looking for interior angles, just make sure they add up to 180. And when you're looking for the sides, use the two side lengths that are given. Let's try another. So here we're going to find side A. And so like before, first thing you want to do is find that missing angle. Not always do you have to do this, but it's usually the case. So we plug that in our calculator and we get 75.5 degrees. So now we can fill it in and we've got a complete triangle now interior wise. So now what is it asking us to find? It's finding side A. So side A is always opposite of side X. Got it? Okay, so if you're looking for side A, we're definitely gonna need the sine of A 
all over A. So its angle and its side. And then B, we have its angle, but we don't have its side, so we're not using that one. C, we have its angle and its side. So sine of 67 degrees all over 80.2. And then we'll cross multiply again, so this times this. And as you do a bunch of these, you'll start to get quicker at it. And then we divide. So A equals 80.2 sine 75.5 degrees all over sine of 67 degrees. So as you can see, like before, it's this one times this one divided by that one. So you're basically just flipping these two and putting them next to that one. And there you go. So we plug that in our calculator and we get 84.4. So that's what our A is, 84.4. Now a quick way to verify that your answers are correct is the sides opposite the angle are related to their angle. So if A is bigger than C, then side A will be bigger than side C, which is true. So if this came out to be less than 80.2, you know your math is backwards. There's something wrong there. This one should be bigger than 80.2 because its angle is bigger. Just think about it. Its, it's angle spans the side. So the bigger you make the angle, the bigger the side gets too. So same basic idea. All right. So I want you to try these. So you're going to sketch the triangle, solve the triangle for remaining sides and angles. Okay, and if there's not enough room, you're going to use the back of this page. So hit pause now and try them. Okay, so this is what you should have gotten. And obviously, it doesn't matter what your triangle looks like. The What we're using this for, if you haven't asked this question yet, is why is this different from our sine, cosine, tangent, is these are not right triangles. So this works for any triangle. That's the key. So right here we have an obtuse triangle. We have 110 degrees. You notice they're both the same. All I did was move the letters around. That's why you get the same dimensions. Um, but yeah, there's there's some height in here. And it doesn't have to be internal. It just means that this is not a right triangle. So law of sines will find missing side lengths and angles for non-right triangles. That's its benefit. All right, thank you.